United States Congress and presidential candidate, Ron Paul. Ron, welcome to the Wells Report. Good to have you here. Thank you. Nice to be with you. Mr. Congressman, you are running for, uh, you are one, running for president, and, uh, and I want to know why. Well, the most important reason to run for anything is you're supposed to run to win. So that is the intent. Uh, but the real reason that I wait a minute, wait a minute. So what you're saying is is that you're running for president because you want to win a contest. Well, you 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 enter a race to to win. I've entered the race actually oh. at a request of many many people who have supported me through the years and have talked me into saying yes. Uh, the message is very important. There's a lot of support out there. And uh, I didn't know if that were true or not, but I, I filed for it, and now I'm pleased to know that there are a lot of people who are interested in the campaign. Well, I can tell you personally that we have been contacted by at least hundreds of people who wanted us to have this conversation with you. So your uh, support uh, for this enterprise is certainly very strong in North Texas, and I can tell you that for sure. Well, it's nice to hear. Let's talk a little bit about what you want to get done as president. So so essentially what you want to do is you are taking the – when you say you're running to win, you're taking this very seriously. That is correct. Okay. Um, what I want to know about is, uh, is you know, your policies. You're going to be running as a Republican candidate, and you already have more money than John McCain. And you are, um, you are in a position where, where you are at once – thought of very highly among rank-and-file Republicans around the country. On the other hand, all the political pundits, et cetera, say you really don't have much of a chance to win. And, of course, uh, that's what campaigns are all about. You know, it's pretty early. We have quite a few months before the first primary, and I, we have to sort that out. Uh, we're uh, getting more supporters every day, and the money is coming in uh, in a reasonable fashion. So the big big uh, chore is is to translate supporters into votes, and that's what we're doing, and that means that we have to be heard by a lot of people and let people know what uh, we stand for and then uh, find out how they're going to vote. All right, let's find out exactly what those policies are that you're running on. Let's, let's tell people about Ron Paul, if we can. Um, let, I went to your website today. I downloaded the, uh, the, the talking points that you have, not talking points, but policy statements you've made. And let's start with border security and immigration reform. What do you want to do as president? Okay. I do not support the current policy of subsidizing illegal immigration. So I want to stop that. I think we should have stronger border security. I think we should eliminate the incentives for illegals to come here by giving them free education and free medical care. I think we should take away the incentive of the easy road to citizenship by breaking the law. And to clarify uh, that uh, birthright citizenship was not intended by the 14th Amendment and uh, in opposition to uh, amnesty of any sort. Uh, But to do this, you need money and you need personnel, and I would achieve that by – by changing our foreign policy, bringing many of our troops home and saving a lot of money overseas and dealing with something I think is more important, that is dealing with our own borders. Okay, so so when you say bring your your uh, uh, the troops home, uh, let's talk about your war and foreign policy. I mean, what troops specifically are you talking about? Well, I can't think of any that I really think deserve to be outside of our own area here in this country to defend our country. I don't think we need troops in Europe or Korea or Japan. And we certainly need to get out of the Middle East because it's caused so much harm and suffering and and it's draining this country financially and in many other ways. So our military is suffering. So I I want to come home. I want to just bring our troops home. Uh, At the same time, I want to be engaged in the world. I want to be trading with the world and and being friends with uh, more as many people as we can, but not to isolate ourselves, but to uh, bring our troops home and save a lot of money. Okay, so so you are saying you'd bring the troops home from Iraq, for example. Oh, sure. Okay, and and you're saying that you'd still want to do a lot of trading and interacting with other foreign governments, right? We what do, do you think? What do you think our allies would do if we were in a position where we went into a country, toppled a government, destabilized the entire country, and then left before the job was done? Do you think that that would have any impact on any of your trade policies or or America's standing in the world at all? 
I think that people would breathe a sigh of relief. What we're doing there has alienated us uh, from most of the world. We have more enemies and less friends than ever. I mean, we are diplomatically isolated right now. So I would think that if we change our foreign policy and that we were open for trade uh, with people and being friends with people rather than putting sanctions on so many countries, uh, they, they would be welcome. But right now, the policies that we have have uh, not served us well. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, okay. Let's move on. Uh, tell me a little bit about your ideas about property property rights and eminent domain. Well, I, I think there's some. Uh, I think the original intent of the eminent domain provision in the Constitution has been grossly distorted. Uh, because if you have a free society and a free market and private property rights, eminent domain is very, very minor and very, very restrictive. And may, matter of fact, the Constitution may be even too lenient. So I want the people to own the property, uh, not the government. And the government should never have, a, especially local governments and state governments supported by our Supreme Court, the ability to take land from people who happen to be, uh, you know, poorer people that uh, don't have the ability to fight in courts and take this land and give it to, uh, you know, corporations that are going to pay higher taxes in order to subsidize cities. I think that use of eminent domain is an outrage, and and uh, we should do much more to protect private property rights. Okay, so if the Supreme Court of, of the United States has weighed in and, and, and ruled as they have, how would you change that particular opinion? What would you do? Would you enact new legislation? Well, you should do it through legislation, or one thing you can do on many, many of these issues is to remove the jurisdiction, jurisdiction from the federal courts. Uh, federal courts haven't served the interests of uh, freedom all that often. And if they're abusing it all the time, uh, you can, by majority vote of the Congress, pass a law that said that uh, the Supreme Court can't hear these uh, these cases, and it would have to be decided by local officials. Well, but let me ask you this question. Wouldn't then the Supreme Court of the United States immediately uh, immediately rule that unconstitutional? That is true, and that means that the uh, democratic process of putting the right kind of people either in an administration or in our courts means that the changes have to evolve in a different fashion and go back in the other direction of, of protecting property rights. So there's no magic wand that can erase all the mistakes made over these many, many years. Uh, but that, that is true. You always have that, that problem. Uh, but uh, the people... Uh, if they support this position and they're led in the proper fashion, they will speak out, and courts uh, frequently then will uh, reflect the people's views. We are speaking with presidential candidate Ron Paul also. He is a congressman from District 14, Texas, and uh, has joined us very graciously. And, sir, it's awfully nice of you to join us here. I've been looking for this conversation, looking forward to this for quite some time. And if you forgive me for being so brusque, I'm just trying to get through as many things as I can because I want people to be able to take part in the conversation as well. And if you have a question for Ron Paul, presidential candidate, now is your time to ask it. 214-787-1570, 800 Outside the 